Hello everyone, ZXSS here, and I'm back with um, kind of the review I promised um, last time. And what are we looking at this week? Fortnite. Well, I've been on holiday, so um, <laughs> it's been a while since I've done this. But yeah, as promised from my last review, we're going to take a look at Dungeon Keeper. And the reason why we're looking at Dungeon Keeper? Well, let's just put it this way. EA decided to go and take a massive crap on the franchise. One which I thought was pretty much um, done and dusted for, but we'll get to something that in a minute. But anyway, Dungeon Keeper, released in 1997 by, well, who else would you think of done? This is a Bullfrog production, so it was done by Peter Molyneux before he got an absolute hard-on for her, for um, Fable that he couldn't actually get rid of. It seemed to be a kind of, kind of permanent Viagra thing. Uh, for him, but no, this is when Mulinu was developing other games, bar something that was just, <laughs> well, what he kept as a franchise going anyway. But no, Dungeon Keeper. The um, saying evil is good actually fits this game cast well, because it's kind of a real-time dungeon management simulation. Um, how do you get a real-time dungeon management simulation? Well, it's simple. You play the role of the Dungeon Keeper, all-round bad dude, and who just wants to build his dungeon and beat the crap out of the heroes that try to do the do-gooder thing that which, um, when they come visit your dungeons. Well... What else are you going to do to do good? Let's put it that way. They should all be strung up by barbed wire around by their knackers. But like I say, you play the bad guy in this game and you are in charge of various dungeons and their management. Um, alongside with the management of what you'd be able to do, you can actually sit there and build rooms. Now, you have various different rooms for letting your monsters come in. The main important room is your dungeon heart, and this is what must be protected at all cases. And then, of course, you can then open yourself a portal to um, get yourself some monsters in. And then, depending on the rooms that you have, will then depend upon the sort of monsters that will come and inhabit your dungeon. Now, from the rooms that are available, of course, there needs to be living space for your um, monsters, and then there also has to be place for them to eat. These are absolutely necessary. Plus, there are treasure rooms that you can then um, actually um, store all your ill-gotten gains by using your imps to um, mine out um, various gold and gem seams on the level. There's something satisfying in this game, because one thing is one of the best features I do like about this game is the fact you can actually give your friendly little imps who are doing it for you a quick swift backhand and then actually um, expect them to work a little faster in which they do as they go scurrying off as your monsters um, then have in then later on you actually find ways of upgrading your stuff later on you'll get um, a training room so your monsters can get stronger as they dance around and then you also um, get yourself things like libraries and workshops so you can research magic and then actually build traps to help defend your dungeon um, against the various things that are incoming now, there will either be one of two things. There could either be a bunch of noble heroes who are just out to sit there and really ruin your day, or they could actually be another dungeon keeper who you're in direct competition with. Sometimes it may even be a pain in a problem, and there actually could be both. The sorts of monsters that come and inhabit your dungeon range from the very first things to giant beetles and giant flies. Yeah, we know not a sort of exasperant thing here. But then later on you do get things up to the more powerful uh, creatures like um, warlocks who can then help with your research in your library. And then you've got dark mistresses who get attracted by torture chambers. And while she's not busy not training, she's torturing herself in one of them. Yeah, kinky bitch she is, that one. Other sort of monsters including vampires, fat bile demons... Hellhounds and various other general little um, things and monsters that just want to murder people if you want to be truthfully honest for this. The management side of the game comes of course with your resources. You need to be uh, have enough resources to train your creatures. And of course the creatures inhabiting your dungeon obviously are going to want to be paid. If, pe if creatures don't get paid and, or if they don't get fed then they get grouchy. Then they'll either just leave the dungeon in a huff or they will just sit there and just start wrecking your dungeon. The AI is actually really quite good for this, and it just generally um, makes you sit there and really think about your actions before you do them. As far as it goes, this does hold management quantities, and this is what I really like to get out of the game, and this is what I thought was really, really good. It's done in real time, and then you actually um, um, have to um, keep on your toes. You can cheat somewhat and keep the enemy out um, with the fact that you've got um, consistent um, brick walls. Uh, which you can then fortify just to stop them getting through. Yeah, I know it was an early bug with the game, and uh, the fact that the ones that are tunneling around can't type tunnel through your um, tunnel through your um, fortified walls. But hey, it just gave you a little bit of extra chance to actually get things done, which is always a pain in the ass. And especially for some missions in this game, you really do get pressured very, very early. And that and putting that that's an actual fact to this one. 
the graphics for the time, this is 1997, so we're still playing in a 3D sort of aspect. But then again, it's not 3D. It's all flat 2D. But to give you a truth, it looks really, really quite good. Um, you can switch into a high resolution mode. Uh, which is always a good thing, especially on some of these older games, which could really, really benefit a high res. Um, and was for 1997 was generally a pleasure to watch. Now I do know there were some other games around on the market, especially the Commander Conquer series was on a thrive, but um, this seemed to be that little bit more detailed. The little creatures run around and they're just they're just generally well detailed themselves. There's even very small details you can see with creatures. Especially if you look at something like your imps, if they're not busy doing work, they sit there smoking a fag. And then various other creatures, whenever they gain a level through training, they do a little dance. Or you can, you can even see smaller animation frames when they're eating. One that's particularly the best one is the warlock. When he actually gets a chicken, you can actually see him zap it. And it turns into a roast chicken on a plate before he eats it. So for even being 2D uh, sprite-based characters for these monsters, it's it still has a pretty good amount of detail in it. Which, to me, is actually pretty good. Yeah, I, I really liked this game when I was younger. This game kept me going for a really, really good while. The campaign was 20 missions. Um, there was a lot of trial and error in some of the missions, because <laughs> if you went the wrong way about it, you got spanked severely. And then you just had to generally um, sit there and say, Ah, so that's what I did wrong. And then you have to restart the mission then to um, carry on um, knowing and learning your lesson, hopefully, from what it was. Dealing with situations in your dungeon, especially with your own creatures, can be dealt with with a quick right click and giving these people a slap. Like I say, you can use it to make your imps work faster, but some people will get grouchy if you give them a hit. I know for a fact that bald imps don't like it, and if you actually sit there and watch them, they'll actually stick their fingers up at you if you actually give them a slap. So it's quite it's quite um, amusing on this one. When it comes down to strategies, the game is actually quite strategic. You can actually sit there and plan... Um, how far you want to expand and then use the various other rooms and stuff to actually um, sit there and secure your um, areas quite nicely. You can get rushed on the in-between so you have to make sure that your um, monsters are ready for it. If you're stuck in missions with limited resources you're going to have to level your creatures wisely and actually do research wisely. You can actually um, redirect creatures very quickly by simply picking them up, in which then when you dangle your cursor over the open area, which you control, you can see the creatures dangling helplessly inside your hand. It's great being the king as far as it concerns over this. And then you can then drop them into battle, and then watch them fight out with the invading areas of good, and especially for the things like the lord of the land. It's always so very, very satisfying when you sit there and you punch his face completely in, and then sit there and say, Ha! Take that! <laughs> The building, the building of this game is actually really quite free. You could create sh uh, rooms of um, any certain shapes that you want. It's um, a total free for all, just as long as you've got the space. And when you start playing and you really learn this game, you start learning ta on tactically placing your um, your rooms. If you suddenly learn that oh, so the bad guys do come through this path, I got an idea. Why don't we put a training room there? So while the creatures are training, next time they try walking through your dungeon, they're going to get their faces punched to death. Which, in all in all, is good fun. Now, of course, some creatures also, as well, won't live with each other. Yeah, we know that's a pain in the rear end, because you want all your creatures to get along happily. But can you imagine a spider and a, um, and a fly getting along happily? No. While you go beating around the heroes of good and the other monsters, once you gain access to a prison, you can actually imprison monsters and then torture them. Yay, great fun. And then during the torture process, you can then sit there, and you, they'll either give you information about the um, land, or they'll actually... Um, join your side, or they'll just die miserably and turn into a ghost. The tactics for this is very, very good, and the um, missions aren't bang, bang, and you're done, it's over. You do need to sit there and plan ahead with a lot of what you've done. And like I said, the later missions are going to um, tax you um, if you're not good at the game. It's um, a very good... Um, for novices as well, I found that the in-game is not too pushy, the learning curve is pretty good. Until you gain all the rooms and all available spells, you basically get one room per mission, um, which is new for you to play with, and then you actually get yourself um, a little bit later on, and um, you can then get yourself multiple spells. Which will assist you in the aid of battle, um, especially come with some one which is known as a call to arms where you can get your monsters to all rush to uh, the aid of this one and then you've got various healing spells and lightning spells so if they are stupid enough to actually step on your territory then you could give them a good zap from a lightning bolt spell 
always a good thing if you ask me because you really don't want these snoopy little heroes and other dungeon creatures who are supporting another leader to be stepping on your territory now you could also get a workshop and then you could also build traps traps are a good fun and also another sense, uh, sense of income if you don't want to use it yourself now once you've um, also set up your traps you can then get poison gas traps to slow down the enemy you can get electric traps even down to a good old fashioned rolling boulder trap which you can then booby trap into hallways always good fun and always a good laugh to actually um, see um, them running away from a rolling boulder only to be squashed flat this is um, very very good um, for this one and if you carefully planned your dungeon then you could actually um, create these um, corridors very very nicely and literally booby trap um, your um, dungeons to a successful degree all in all this <laughs> this was given away on Valentine's Day yeah I know it's a particularly um, daft and thing to do uh, for good old games and this is practically where I reacquired my copy of the game good old games did this on a for a reason as well I'll get to this in a moment, um, but they were also selling Dungeon Keeper 2 for $1.49, which was about 80 pence. Can't complain of that. <laughs> it's an extremely good value, um, and it's still good value now. I think it's only something like less than £5 if you want to buy either of these um, on good old games as they are. And Dungeon Keeper comes with the um, Deeper Dungeons expansion, a set of very hard challenges um, for e expert Dungeon Keepers alike. And trust me, I've played them. I never finished any of them because, hell, they were a real, really hard challenge on that one. But what was the reason behind Good Old Games offering this really, really great and really, really classic game away for free? Well, if you remember rightly, um, back in the day, when the whole fiasco with SimCity kicked up and they then sold SimCity 2000 at like 90% off, uh, just to rub um, salt into the um, wounds of EA... Um, to um, show them that it's like what they're doing is wrong. I'm kind of guessing EA didn't learn their lesson from this, and here is the reason why, and also what pushed me to do this review. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Dungeon Keeper Mobile. This is a hideous sham of a title that absolutely... It's Dungeon Keeper in um, name only. I absolutely fucking hate EA for what they've done to the franchise with this. I absolutely f friggin' hate them on this. The game itself, like I say, was a great real-time strategy game. It was good for um, creating tactics, and it was just a marvel to play. This piece of shit is nothing more than one of the greediest cash-grab games I have ever seen them develop. And... What what can you do? The creation of rooms is gone. There's no choice of all this. The real-time strategy element of this game is gone. You now take turns and you start doing a tower defense style dungeon runs. And to give you the usual truth and honesty, they're crap. And they're bloody horrible. If you, you want to dig out gems, hell, you're going to have to wait 24 hours just to dig out a single gem. If you come across a bit of a solid wall, you have to wait 4 hours to get rid of that and then if you want to summon creatures oh that will cost you about 45 seconds of time and where, where, where's your where's your layering where's all the buildings there's like nine monsters in this mobile game it's an absolute freaking atrocity why e ea look you could have done so much better than this vile poser of a game you could have easily transposed dungeon keeper into a phone but no, you had to get greedy. And I'm talking extremely greedy. You sit there, you need gems for everything. Hey, you want to speed up digging down the wall? Here, spend some gems. You want to get these monsters faster? Here, spend some gems. Oh, you've not got enough stone to build this room? Here, have some gems. Want that, this room build faster? Here, have some gems. Everything has a price tag on it. And it really gets on my nerves to see this. Everything has a price tag. As I say, and it's not even done fairly. Hell, if you you want that extra imp, get ready to spend about fiver in gems just to get another imp to work for you. Seriously, and it's not even done. It's not even done to a degree where it's even fair. It gets to a point where it grinds so hard, you feel you feel so nasty about buying the gems just so you can play the game more. The original Dungeon Keeper was a great classic, and to give you the truth and honesty, for the price you could spend on getting enough gems for one imp, you could possibly go to good old games and buy Dungeon Keeper 
or possibly Dungeon Keeper 2 than for some of the stupid, ridiculous prices that EA are basically um, asking for this un unworthy piece of crap of a title, which they're trying to pose off as Dungeon Keeper. It's not. It really, really isn't. And if, if you're an Android or an iPhone user, I really do suggest, if you want to honour the original game, go to GOG and buy it, but do not support this game. It's a greedy cash grab, plain and simple. And it's just vile, if you ask me. I hate it. I really do. So, EA, I'm giving you the, the I'm giving you the big middle finger here. And to anyone else, please, if you want to see this game with some justice, go to GOG. With a, you don't even need a very high end PC to run it, but go to GOG, show some love, show them some some money, and pay for the original game. Trust me, you'll get such more satisfying feel out of that than what you would out of this piece of crap that they try to pass off as a modern day keeper game. Yeah. <laughs> This is ZXSS um, signing out, and seeing that a good few people liked my um, scrolling fighting games, uh, especially with the Golden Axe Spider-Man review, I'm going to have a look see what Capcom offered in the scrolling fighting game area because they during the arcade time because they actually offered quite a few. Anyway, I'll see you all soon, people. Enjoy. Bye bye.